I am not Greg Kinnear. So sorry I'm not Greg Kinnear. If I've done my job by the end of this speech, I will in fact be Greg Kinnear. Thank you so much. I feel lucky. I feel honored to be here with you this morning. And I said to a few people last night, I have community envy. Don't you feel lucky? Don't you feel lucky? We are as healthy as our most unfortunate members, and you are part of a community that is helping to end homelessness one family at a time, giving them dignity and respect. And I know for me, when I give, when I show up at a breakfast like this, I'm doing it for me. And you want to believe that your time, your effort, and your money is being put to good use, and clearly it is. I congratulate all of you on choosing to be here this morning and on picking such a spectacular organization to support. As I see it beyond the gift, here we go, hope it's not too loud, beyond the gift I give myself when I'm compassionate, addressing homelessness is vital for the overall well-being of this and every community. Poverty is pandemic in America. The following are some of the startling statistics you haven't yet heard this morning. Approximately 45 million Americans were living in poverty in 2009, and experts believe the number is increasing. A record number of families are living just on the edge. Far too many are one paycheck or one hospital visit away from homelessness. As of June, the number of Americans on food stamps had set a new all-time record for 19 consecutive months. Incidents of domestic violence have increased as much as 30 percent in some communities. And today, one out of every five children in the United States is now living in poverty. These statistics break our hearts, and yet the Shelter Network believes, knows, that a solution is possible. What I have found talking to Michelle and touring one of their shelters yesterday was that they seem to understand that there is more than one way to do this. And in fact, if we want to heal the community, we have to do it as a community. I work with a teen shelter in Los Angeles that gives support and shelters to teenagers, many of whom did not run away, that's what people think, but many of them were threw out of their homes, thrown out of their homes. I made this short film that you mentioned about this woman named Lisa Nigro, who was a cop and didn't feel that she was helping, able to help enough in that way, so she started serving sandwiches to homeless people in the park out of a red wagon. Then she got a school bus and put tables inside and called it the Inspiration Cafe. She now has three restaurants in Chicago. And her mission statement is to serve the homeless with dignity and respect and to help them get back on their feet. The Shelter Network understands this and for that reason collaborates with our other organizations that help with food, support for women, and family service agencies. The fact is, as we learned, homelessness can happen to anyone or to any family. It can happen for a range of reasons and often be unexpected. More people than we know who we see every day working in low-paying jobs cannot manage on their meager paycheck to find a home. Children who are homeless struggle in school and often, experience, and often the experience of struggling in school challenges them later in life. So several years ago, I played a single mother in a movie called Pay It Forward, which was based on a beautiful novel written by Catherine Wright, Ryan Hyde. And in the movie, I had a son named Trevor who was played by Haley Joel Osmond. He was given an assignment in his class to devise and put into action a plan that would help change the world for the better. And this boy, Trevor, came up with a brilliant charitable pyramid scheme, basically, that was based on good deeds rather than profits. And he called the plan Paying It Forward. So in this movie, his first good deed was to let a homeless man live in our garage. The man paid the favor forward by doing car repairs for my character and by standing with a suicidal woman until he could help talk her off of the ledge. My character pays it forward by reaching out to her own mother who was homeless. So this simple idea in this movie that some people liked and some people didn't was a catalyst for a global movement of good deeds. But it has been 10 years, and even though at that time we thought the movie was incredibly pressing and relevant because we were all struggling, those are now the good old days. I think people need to be reminded of the potential benefits of paying it forward again. If every one of us in this room today committed to doing at least one good deed a week, 
It would inspire others, and the ripple effect would be transformational beyond our wildest dreams. And if some of those acts were in support of those struggling to find a place to live, we'd heal ourselves and our communities all at once. President Obama's Opening Doors plan is designed to prevent and ultimately end homelessness within 10 years. He said, it is simply unacceptable for individuals, children, families, and our nation's veterans to be faced with homelessness in this country. In his letter announcing the plan, he said the following, since the founding of our country, home has been the center of the American dream. Stable housing is the foundation upon which everything else in a family's or an individual's life is built. Without a safe, affordable place to live, it is much tougher to maintain good health, get a good education, or reach your full potential. So now, I'd like to talk about Shelter Network a bit. I had the privilege yesterday of touring Shelter Network's First Step for Families. All I can say is, wow, maybe all of you already know how beautiful it is, what a, what a nurturing, outdoor and indoor facility they have for kids of different ages, computer terminals for the big kids, art supplies for everybody. When you pull up, the first thing you see is a wall of big wheels and scooters and bikes. This is not what I was expecting. Not only is the facility beautiful, but the staff and the volunteers, even the residents, were incredibly impressive. I got to meet um, Duane and Robin, who are the four-year-old twins of the couple that you met there. They were unspeakably adorable. And I got to see the on-site child development center where, they're, where they get to play while their parents are at work. I was very impressed when I was invited to come here today by Shelter Network's success rate. And I read 80% on the website, and then somebody handed me something that said 90%. And I said to Michelle, are we selling these breakfast eaters a bill of goods? Am I supposed to say 90%? Is it? And she said, well, actually, it's 93%. <laughs> I've, I've never heard of anything like that. <laughs> It was also heartening to hear about the organization's work with homeless veterans, about their Housing First program and homeless outreach team, and about the community cost savings that have come as a result of Shelter Network's Vendum program, which provides stable housing and services for those who are chronically homeless. Michelle also described yesterday to me um, a program they have in place for people who are on the brink of homelessness, because once that happens, there's a first and last month's rent that has to be come up with, and the hill gets much steeper. <clears throat> Shelter Network obviously has a proven model for success. It is something the community should be proud of and that should be protected and invested in by all who can to the fullest extent possible, especially now during these difficult times, as Michelle described. As Christine pointed out earlier during the Fund to Need, we can all make a difference in the lives of those facing homelessness. And all I can say is, if you haven't given give. If you've given, give more. And I just try to imagine how we will all feel when we drive away from here this morning. And if we gave even more than was comfortable to give, my guess is that our drive to work and our drive to finish our day and pick up our kids will be brightened by the fact that we gave more than we were planning to when we drove here this morning. Thank you all so much for allowing me to be part of what you're doing. I'd like to kidnap all of you and bring you to the west side of Los Angeles. I'm hoping that's possible. We need you there as well. And I hope you feel as proud and as lucky as I do to get the chance to support such an incredible organization. Thank you so much. Thank you.